embodied sportsmanship. Your dedication, you taught us resilience and teamwork. And now that we close this chapter, I think we should all just look back at it to remember the moments that took us back to it. So Overwatch League died, and now we've got the Overwatch CS. Nervous Peter? P. Oh, Nervous Peter. Oh, only during matches. And the way Overwatch CS works is there's two major lands, one in Dallas and one in Stockholm. And the first Overwatch CS stage has already happened. Uh, it was for circuit points. Circuit points are amount of points rewarded to the first place, the second place, the first place. Obviously, you know, the higher you end on the ladder, the more circuit points you get. The later the tournament, the more points. And as we get closer to the second land two, the points will keep going up for stage three and stage four. But throughout the year, all those circuit points get accumulated per player. And the amount of circuit points determines whether you qualify the lands or not. Okay, so the way this team was built is I was looking at what Korean pieces make like core pieces of a team historically in Overwatch. Uh, Koreans have been some of the best players. Uh, and I wasn't just looking at who's the best player, I was also looking at what works best in a mixed roster. Someone is the most flexible player in Overwatch right now. He can play every single tank. He works very, very hard, but he also has a certain goofiness about him. You know, when push comes to shove, he is the leader that a lot of our players look up to. And with someone coming Merit, who I believe is the best hard hit scan player in the world. Merit's very stoic, very quiet. You know, there's a saying that quiet rivers run deep. He's definitely the clutch player. He's the one that's like calm, collected. And if someone's doing something bad in a match, he'll come out, get a random pick, random kill. He'll come in clutch. We sometimes joke that he's a robot, but he's really not. I believe Vega to be the best main support in North America. He all tracks for the team. He helps make plans for the fight. I think Vega is the most inexperienced out of, out of the team. He has a lot to learn, but he also learns very quick. Uh, RuPaul is kind of the same like Ham. He is very focused on what the game is. He brings like the mood together. You know, he, he's the one that always makes the plans. He's the one that like asks the players to go to the mall or asks the players to go get food together. He's like the emotional leader on the team. And then, you know, rounding it all out is Sugar Free, who I believe is just by far the best flex DPS in, in NA. One thing that really sets him apart is while he's, you know, mechanically a very good player, he's also able to lead the team when he knows like what the win conditions are and how to play the certain comp. He brings up the mood. Uh, he's very social, very outgoing. Uh, and, you know, I think one thing about Toronto that really struck me was like me and Vega we, we'd get up and then we'd go on our walk to the facility and we're just instantly blasted with wind like it's not super cold outside but the wind makes us freeze because it's just hitting us in the face, no matter where we go. I think we just have the best North American players from this region. Me, RuPaul, and Vega were all like top. And then in someone in Merit, they just won our grand finals last year. Both were MVP, so. Why does it seem like we're untouchable in NA? We're the team with the most funds. We're the team that imported the Koreans. We're the team that has like a team house and a team facility. You know, all these NA teams, they don't have that. So I'd say it's a, it would be a slight on us if we weren't dominant in NA. Constantly in the team. Oh, 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 oh. Sugar free with another kill, make that almost five. A minute to go. And this is where their offense is gonna end. There is the place. Oh my God, the healers were cowering in front of Sugar Free. Mess with the best, die like the rest. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, I wouldn't mind as much if the matches were actually competitive, but like, it's just like, I'm showing up and I can off-roll against any of these teams and it's kinda, it's not as fun.
Yeah, we'll keep it. Someone's got to beat Toronto before we start believing that it's possible, right? Like, yeah. we're going to keep doubting yep. until it happens. So, that, you know, there, there is always that hope, and I think forced into the game, you've got to come into this match swinging. Uh, if you kind of, if you are scared at all, you play slow at all, and you do anything unnatural, Toronto's just going to eat you up. Try one, try one, try one. Try one, try one. Uh, in there and find a big slam. Cal already down. And I think it's probably time to begin the conversation about the fundamental level between these two and the difference there. Because they were stopped dead by Merritt. And there it is. Down. A clean 3 0 series. Toronto to find close out. Is Miranda. Yeah. Pick a gap? There's nothing they can't deal with, and I think so far they've shown it. Teams have tried to bust that different things, they work for them. I'm going Toronto with a very convincing 3 1 victory here. I mean, almost everyone on the team was sick, and I don't think we were taking it as serious. Like, everyone was kind of sleepy in the match. Flanking someone with that, there's just nothing he could do. A great fight from the Toronto Defiant, showing us a lot of their quality there, but they are too far behind to make a difference against M80, who'll snap up Coliseo and continue to stamp their dominance over this series. Toronto now coming into this game with only one man lost. They've lost two already in the space of this series. M80 are the real deal. <laughs> It's a 4v4, but Sugar Free gets caught out, runs straight into Hawk, and then is eliminated. Then M80 finally have a chance here to dethrone the kings of the OWCS. Then they do so in style. Yeah, I think we we're all pretty angry. It was our, it's our first loss, so we we're all pretty frustrated by it. Uh, especially like more people, some people on the team more so because like there's a lot of like banter on Twitter. Uh, I think Vega probably had it the worst. Uh, I mean, Gator, whenever we scrimmed him, he's just like spamming Mash Chat with like C9 and like all these other jokes. Same with Liar. And the Liar said something on Twitter about me, even though Liar got gapped. Even We lost and Liar still got gapped. He said that like I was a feeder. So. He was the most angry after we lost. So it was a good motivator going into the good finals. Oh, yeah, no, they definitely talk shit too early. I knew we were going to beat them in the finals. So I was just like, eh, whatever. It's like, it won't happen again. Welcome back, friends, for the last game of the day. We are going to be heading into the Grand Finals. But I know you guys are just conserving energy for this match, so let's go really hard, right? 80 was good to take down the tank, but Ru RuPaul killed like half yeah. the team. Well, and someone actually uh, took out both supports there for M80, so uh, you're going to have to pull your stick to defense up. Oh, oh what a stick! Oh. Shifted out of there, but it was too little, too late, happy. The gun's got to stay alive with 10% towards that play, but he gets speared out of the sky. Oh, it is someone and Vega to hold down the fort. Toronto to fight and tower over the competition. And you are back to back stage champions. Okay, <laughs> business. Three words. Free as fuck. Like, compared to Korea and Europe, like, we can definitely be the best internationally. I think just watch out for us in the international tournament.